Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Ben. Welcome back to my programming showcase. Today I'm excited to show you Salvager of Nanizen, which was my final project for the class Graphics and Game Engine Programming of my sophomore year. It was written in C Sharp and it uses the XNA framework. The idea for this project was a short, linear action puzzle game set in a post-apocalypse alien world. And uh, the point of each level would be to collect or salvage fuel cells so that you could power a ship and eventually escape the planet Nanizen. As usual, I wrote the code, drew the art in Photoshop, and implemented the sounds from freesounds.org. However, my friend Ben Hiller provided the artwork for the Salvager, which is the player character, and the plasma rifle. So big thanks to him. I'm going to split this project up into two videos. This first one is going to be a playthrough of the game. The second will show off my level editor and how I store level data. Taking a quick look at the options, we have full screen, controls, and also a localization option for Spanish. All text in the game is stored in an array. When the program runs, it loads a text file with all the English text into that array, and when I switch to Spanish, it simply loads another text file with the Spanish translations. If we go to play here, we have the level editor, we can continue from the previous level, or we can start a new game. So without further ado, let's get into it. Level 1, Day 13. I've discovered a transport vessel, but it's lacking fuel. I need to find fuel cells. Alright, here we are in the world of Nanism. So, I'm a new player, and I see this relatively inviting path down here. What could go wrong? And already we're learning a lot about the game. I must have stepped on a pressure plate and triggered what turned out to be a bomb. Now, there will be different contraptions laying around which make up the majority of the puzzle aspect of this game. There's no penalty for dying in Salvager of Nanism, so let's try that again. Ah! Whoops. I guess it's best to avoid pools of radioactive sludge. Hey, third time's a charm. Yes, we are learning. You'll probably be noticing some frame loss throughout the video, and that's not the game. That's uh, the recording software, unfortunately. I got the sliding on the ice mechanic from uh, the classic Pokemon games, and in those you'd see it in a cave or two, but I've gone and applied it throughout Salvager of Nanism. And what I like about it is that it makes uh, the basic act of moving throughout the game a puzzle in itself. So we have a pressure plate again, but it's hooked up to a new device, and uh, usually if there's a new device in a level, you'll want to hook it up to progress, of course, disregarding the first example. There we go. Now, if I just come back here. Our first fuel cell. Level 2, day 15. The various contraptions left by the previous inhabitants are dangerous but useful. They employ a primitive form of plasma based projectiles. Looks like we have the same setup here. Hmm, but that pressure plate isn't hooked up to anything. Ah. So yeah, this is kind of inspired by redstone from Minecraft. Uh, when you destroy walls it, with plasma, it will leave behind plasma film, as I called it, which can conduct power. And it can also be transferred through indestructible walls here. So we have two fuel cells here. That one's just there so you don't go over and shoot that plasma and accidentally destroy uh, one of those. Because if you destroy a fuel cell, you'll lose the level. Now, when we apply power to these, they rotate. And you'll probably quickly guess that they are for redirecting plasma. So let's try that. Nice. Now, a lot of new players will probably do this, and they'll discover that shooting plasma over plasma film will actually destroy it. But we're not going to do that. And now that we've opened up a path, the player will probably quickly discover that they can launch plasma into that blue bo block and uh, trigger a pulse of energy. 
Level 3, Day 21. I've secured shelter and food within the transport, but I must venture outside. At least I was left with this suit. Exposure to the radiation or the cold would be deadly. Enough of that. So as we come up here, we can see two new devices. And what I tried to do is make each device uh, visually indicative of their function. So you see one is pulsing, like it's trying to provide power. And there's actually a direct path of crumbling walls to the other device. So if we can just get some plasma over there. Oops. Third time's the charm. Rotate this here mirror. And surprise, it's a heat source which melts the water, uh, allowing you to pass. You can see these uh, particle effects coming from the water. And those are pretty important because in more uh, dire situations, you need to know if you're going to slide across the ice or not. So those particles are there to say, yes, this tile is currently uh, completely liquid. No way to pass, but it looks like destroy that. We've been seeing some semblance of narrative is being presented in the transition screens, but actually there isn't more, much more. I didn't get around to creating a real story or even making a proper ending. Instead, I've started working on another project that should be up on my channel soon. Level 4. Sorry, no more narrative. So there's that pulsing device to the right again, but it's turned off. So, let's see if we can toggle it on. Looks like we're going to have to send plasma up here too. Goodbye. So you can see here, those water particles are really going to help. Go, 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 go. Level 5. Sorry, no more narrative. So this is my, it's dangerous to go alone, take this level. supposed to feel kind of special. Mm. And the point of the top of this level is to uh, kind of get you used to the capabilities of the weapon. It'll pass through three solid walls but it can pass through any number of crumbling walls. Just don't do this. Level 6. This was the first level I made for the game. So we only got one shot now. So we better get more ammo. So let's see, the fuel cell is at the bottom right there, and this bomb, if it explodes, will allow us to get through to it. So, we're going to need to open up the power by uh, realizing that you can shoot over an opened uh, supply depot. Fire. 
fire once, and uh, this time we're going to have to be careful because uh, the plasma projectile is going to come right back to us. Alright, two shots left. Might be getting kind of dark with all those clouds over there, but we need to do this. And finally... Level 7. This level is pretty simple, but it's actually one of my favorites. It was the first one to incorporate the ability to shoot while sliding across the ice. It's pretty lenient with the ammo count to give you a few chances to make the shot. And we've rotated that mirror. Ah, I love a good chain reaction. You know that if you've seen my Spoofs and Booters video. Also, to reference Hand Simulator, you'll notice when plasma explodes it lights up the screen cyan. This is done by a shader which is lowering the red component of each pixel. It comes out cyan because it's blue plus green. And it's kind of a major part of the uh, art style because the plasma rifle is cyan and everything. Level 8. Really quick here, I just want to check out the pause menu because I haven't shown that off yet. We can uh, check out the controls, restart the level, and go back to the main menu. And then from here we'll just continue. So remember at the start of the video how I called it a puzzle action game? Well, that was half right. The AI-driven enemies I had originally planned, which would have constituted the action part, had to be cut in order to meet my other milestones for the project. Although after the class ended, I did keep working on it, and I made the level editor you'll see in the next video. Then a while later, I started working on another project called Wizards, which I hope to make progress videos on soon after this. Down here you'll see the last device I made for the game. It's like a plasma receiver, I'm shooting it now, except that it doesn't intercept the plasma. Level 9. The idea for this level was to provide a sort of maze of walls which you'd have to navigate very efficiently. When I go down here, my goal is to activate that furnace which would allow me to get the final fuel cell. I had three enemy types in mind before they all had to be cut. The first was the golem which would be this large hulking automata that would slowly chase you and use a long distance weapon. You wouldn't be able to destroy golems, only stun them, so you could use them to hold down a pressure plate. Now before I activate this pulsing device, I'd better cut off the connection to the bombs up here. If I didn't, it would set the bombs off and cause a chain reaction, which I love, but it would destroy the fuel cell. Now getting the timing right here is a little bit more important than in the past. But I have two shots to try and not overshoot it. You can see that the gun actually is drawn under the water. I didn't plan to do that, or show that off, it just kinda happened. Level 10. What I did here was make you leave your weapon behind to power something. Cause if you try to go back... The second enemy type I had in mind were these piranha or mutated fish type creatures, which would swim under the ice and in open water. The third type were these swarm of insect-like assassin bots. They would lie dormant in crumbly walls, and you would be able to see visually which ones are trapped. Destroying that wall directly with plasma would kill them, but if caused in a chain reaction of crumbling walls, they would start pursuing you. They would always dash to the side if you try to shoot them. Um, but if you lured them into a corridor of one tile size, 
uh, they wouldn't be able to get out of the way, and so you could kill them. And now we have a bit of a light show to celebrate our victory, because there's only one level left. Level 11! This is the last level. Congrats. Alright, welcome to the final level. I tried to make its difficulty worthy of being the last level, and I know its length is. So if we come over here, there's three channels to be made to these three bombs down here, which will give me access to that fuel cell. Do the first obvious choice, and the second one. Now on a lot of people's first try, they're going to try to open all the paths, but see, oh, well, I don't have enough ammo for that, and uh, this bomb right here actually isn't necessary. You don't need that connection. Let's open up this middle connection, and then you might realize, oh, no, I don't need to use this last uh, ammo either, because the second bomb will trigger the third one. And that's good, because I'm going to need a third, uh, I mean the final shot, to get through those trash walls. So let's make the long trek over. Gotta leave the rifle behind. two explosions. Walk right in. This shot, because we hit the uh, fuel cell. So go for this one. And there we have it. Salvager of Nanison. Remember there will be a part 2 to show off the level editor and how I handle level data. But for now, everyone, thank you for watching, I hope you have a great day, I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper.